Let's bring in the Hall of Famer NFL Network analyst, Kurt Warner, who joins us now. A little bit of a shocker there on Saturday. What was your first reaction, Kurt? <laughs> I mean, I think it was like everyone else's. I mean, I, I don't think anybody saw this coming, um, you know, especially at this age, at this time. We all assumed that uh, no matter what happened this year, that he would continue to kind of work through it. So I think we're all surprised. But at the same time, when you hear him, uh, having been through different situations in the league, I completely understand it. Do you think there's something else that we're missing here? Uh, I don't. Um, I, I really think that the bottom line uh, with the game is that, you know, so many people get into the game because they, they love the game. And then there always seems to be a time when the other stuff starts to outweigh the love for the game. You know, the, the Sunday afternoons, nobody stops loving, but, it's the preparation. It's the off season. And with Andrew Luck, you know, it intensifies with all the rehab and all the pain and you're never healthy to be able to just show up and enjoy what you're doing. And I just think it's, it's, you know, gone on for so long that just like he said, I used to love the game. Now everything else seems to outweigh my love for the game. And it, and it makes it hard to get up every week going, okay, here's my week. I got to go do rehab for two hours, then go through all day. And then I got to do rehab again. And, you know, hopefully by Sunday, I'll be able to play pain free and do what I love to do. But it's always in the back of your mind or you're always playing hurt. And then you add the expectations. I think of now it's, when's he going to be back out there? He needs to be back out there. This team needs him. This team's a championship type team. And, and the pressure of going, I I'm still not healthy what the heck do I do now? You know, do I go and play anyways, even though I know I'm not a hundred percent or do I let this thing kind of play out? And then I hear everybody saying, well, he should be out there. Why is he not out there? I see him doing drills and doing this. He looks like he's good enough to be out there. I just think it weighs on your mind, you know, for so long. And it's been going on, you know, for a number of years now that I think he's just kind of like, I'm tired of dealing with all the other stuff more than I'm dealing with actually playing and doing what I love doing. What I don't understand, I don't know if you can help me understand this, but you, he just, it feels like he made an abrupt decision here. Now, I know he's a thought-out guy, deep thinker. You know, two weeks ago, he talked about he, he got depressed going through all this rehab. That was the first, that was the light that went on for me when I went, oh, wow, okay. I didn't expect to hear that from him. And then when he said that, I thought, all right, but he's healthy now or healthier now, good offensive line, Super Bowl contender. So something, it feels like, happened for you to make a decision that feels like you made a snap judgment here. Yeah, I mean, I understand exactly what you're saying because I think a lot of times we have those feelings, as you said. It comes to a point where we're like, ah, I'm just going to retire. And then you got to take some time and really think about it and think about the long term. And is this really what I want four or five years from now to not be playing this game that I love? But I have to believe that, you know, even though he said he really kind of sat down and thought about it, I had to believe this was weighing on his mind uh, for a long period of time. And I think maybe, you know, you get two weeks to the season and everybody's expecting you to play. And I wonder if that plays into it a little bit as well. Like, I don't think I'm going to be out there for week one. And, you know, I don't want to have to tell everybody, you know, I don't know how long this is going to go on and we're going week to week that you just kind of go, I, I'm just going to retire and let the team move on and move forward. Um, and I'll kind of get some closure on this uh, and be able to step away from it. But I think it does lend itself. And you guys were talking about your, you know, your poll question. I think it does lend itself to, okay, if you made a staff decision and it's because you're not feeling good right now, and you're only 29 years old. Does it really open up the door for 12 months from now when you actually feel really good and know you can still play this game um, to try to come back and play? And, and what does that mean uh, if you go about it this way? Talking to Hall of Famer Kurt Warner. You can see him every Sunday on NFL Network's NFL Game Day morning at 9 a.m. Eastern starting September 8th. I'm curious, and you being in Arizona, this whole clapping with uh, Kyler Murray and, and the Cardinals, what, what, what am I missing here that they're doing something illegal? I, I don't think you're missing anything. You know, I actually got a video from their, their media director uh, just yesterday, and it was comparing things that other quarterbacks have been doing the last couple of years with clapping and kind of the gyrations back there in the shotgun to what Kyler Murray did in the preseason game that got called for. And his is, is way less than what some of these other guys were doing, Sam Darnold and Josh Allen. And so I, I was with you. I went back and watched the tape 
over and over again going, okay, what am I missing here? And then they actually got called, and it was actually Brett Hundley. But he got called for lifting <laughs> up his leg, I mean, this past weekend. I mean, he just lifted his leg. Nothing. I, I don't know what we're missing if they're just trying to make a point like, hey, this is new, this is different. You know, we're going to be very cautious with this and not let you do anything. But from what I've seen up to this point, it seems like they're being targeted a little bit uh, because they're kind of in the forefront with this. But I don't see anything that, you know, I, I can't believe they're going to continue to call in the regular season what they've been calling in the preseason. What have, what have you seen from Kyler Murray? I, I like Kyler. Uh, you know, been out to practice, um, you know, watched all the games. You know, the biggest thing for me is, I think he needs to get better or this offense needs to be better at handling the blitz. Uh, there seems to be a number of times that, you know, against Minnesota and against Oakland where uh, they were bringing pressure and he either didn't have an answer or he wasn't ready with the answer against the pressure. And they better, they better figure that out or that's going to be a problem. But I think you saw yesterday there was three or four just big-time throws from Kyler Murray. I think he's in control. He understands that the moment's not too big. I really like him. I'm not sure they have the pieces around him right now for him to be everything he's going to be, uh, but he's not my biggest concern by any means with uh, with the Cardinals this year. Well, that leads me to this question about putting him in there with an inferior line that they didn't improve upon last year, and now I'm going to put him out there. The last thing I want is my rookie quarterback to go out there and lose confidence, be gun-shy, and always be looking you know, at ghosts out there. It, should he be starting week one, given that offensive line? Yes, he should be, because they're moving forward to the future, and Brett Hundley's not any part of that. And so, yeah, I think he should be starting. And okay. I understand your point. Um, and I think a, a big part of that is always knowing who your quarterback is, what kind of confidence he has. If he goes through some struggles, do you think that's going to affect him long term? And, you know, I think you have to know that first and foremost. And everything I've heard and everything in my conversations with Kyler, I don't worry about that. I don't look at a guy that's going to get gun shy at any point in time. He's a guy that believes he can make every play. He believes he's the best player on the field. Andrew Luck was another guy. He got, you know, beat up a lot. Obviously, it's paying some bad dividends now for the team. But he got beat up a lot when he was young. And he never got gun shy. He, he, he never shrunk from that and I don't think Kyler Murray is that kind of guy but I think it's important that the organization know uh, who that quarterback is when they put him in and and that's why I fully believe he should be the starter week one regardless of what they have around him and you might take your lumps early uh, but it's going to pay dividends for him and for this team in the long run what would you do with Daniel Jones with the Giants Um, well I mean I I think you uh, again I've said this a number of times I think Eli's earned the right to play himself out of the position. Um, And so I know Daniel has played well in the preseason, but this is Eli's job and it deserves to be his job until he shows that he's not the better quarterback uh, come regular season. And when you're seeing real defenses and when that point in time comes, I think it will be tough um, to figure out the right timing and how to do it. Um, But I think Eli holds the job this entire year until the organization is fully believes that Daniel Jones is the better quarterback. Um, and, and I'm still not sure that's the case right now. Who's your sneaky team this year? There's always one or two that move up and one or two that move down. That's a good question. You know, I mean, and again, it's, it's what, do you, what do you base it off of? I mean, you know, the two teams that I think are going to make big jumps this year are Atlanta and Minnesota. And again, I don't know if you look at them and go, oh, they're sneaky because, I mean, you know, Minnesota's got everything. You know, they've got to be a playoff team this year. And Atlanta, I mean, they went through so many injuries last year, but their offense should be dynamic. And as long as they're decent on defense, they should make a move and, you know, be in the playoffs this year as well. And so those are kind of my team that are on the outside that I'm looking at and going, they've got to make a run and be much better than they were record-wise last year. Is it time for Tennessee to move on from Marcus Mariota? I think it's time to be on a short leash as much as I like Marcus as a, as a guy, it's just not the consistency there. And now you've got a guy that has started in this league behind him um, that I think you have to see more consistency week in and week out, or you do have to make the move because, you know, I mean, this is the year it's either you're signing him to the long franchise deal or you're not. And, you know, if you're already convinced he's your guy, then 
Pam, and, and I don't know why you brought in Ryan Tannehill, but you have to believe they don't believe that right now. And if he doesn't come out and show that consistency, I think you got to figure out if the other guy is that guy and, uh, and move forward. Kurt, great to talk to you. We appreciate it and uh, look forward to those uh, Sunday mornings. All right, buddy. Talk that's, to you soon. That's Kurt Warner, NFL Network, the uh, Sunday morning show with Rich Eisen. NFL game day morning at 9 a.m. Eastern starting September 8th. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV, stream for free on BR Live, or download the Dan Patrick Show app.